We are on a journey to watch all of the Star Trek franchise for the very first time. And today we begin Star Trek The Next Generation. Oh! We're here! <laughs> well, Josh, it's finally October. It's spooky season. I got my Just Here for the Booze shirt. I got my Halloween Oktoberfest beer. And it, you know what? I figure since it is spooky season, we should do something pretty scary. We should watch the first season of Star Trek The Next Generation, which many people have told us it's not as good as the later seasons, which means we're going to love it. <laughs> yeah, most likely. Uh, would it be hyperbolic to say that we have waited for this day since starting Star Trek back in February of 2022? Oh, yeah. Like, I... I've obviously always known what Star Trek was. It's been in pop culture somewhere in my life, just never watched it. But ever since I became fans of YouTube channels like Red Letter Media talking about Star Trek, I'm like, oh, that'd be really interesting to get, to get into. But realizing we got to start all the way back at square one, and when I brought up the idea as, for uh, reactions on the channel, and I'm like, man, it's going to take quite a long time, like if Star Trek took off, it's going to take quite a long time to get to TNG if this even takes off. And it did, and it's like, oh, great. And it's like, we have to go through how much to get there? Because I, I was just really excited to watch it. Cause... Yeah, I mean, I feel like the next generation is what, you know, you initially wanted to do. And we were like, oh, well, you know, we should at least see what this original series is about. And I don't think either of us expected to, like, fall in love with the original series, nor to, like, watch every episode. But it was almost like we watched that first episode of the original series and immediately were like, okay, well, we have to watch this. <laughs> yeah. You know, because, like, we liked it so much. Uh -huh. And that's been quite a journey, um, but it is for right now over as we go into the next generation. We'll eventually return with Star Trek V, but um, getting into this, you know, I've been, I've been anticipating this for a very long time. Uh, and I om almost know nothing about Next Generation. Now, I know more than I did about TOS. I knew, like, literally nothing about the original series. But Next Generation, I know that Patrick Stewart is Captain Picard. I knew that Jonathan Frakes is in it. And uh, I love Jonathan Frakes because Beyond Belief is one of my favorite shows of all time. I'm not saying it's, like, an amazing show. But Childhood Nostalgia, Beyond Belief, is what I grew up on. So I'm already a huge fan of him. We used to watch it all the time together. All the time. Does your computer ever seem to have a mind of its own? And I had just seen, like, pictures and, like, you know, kind of the aura around Next Generation. So while I know nothing about the plot or the characters, I knew a little bit more of a baseline, I guess I would say, than the original series. Yeah. It's uh, it's definitely been referenced in pop culture. I'm pretty sure if we go back and just, like, watch stuff we've seen before, we're going to get references that we wouldn't have gotten of before. Like, I remember you sent me one <laughs> spoofing uh, Spock's funeral in Wrath of Khan from Family Guy. I'm like, I have no memory of this. Of all the souls I have encountered in my travels, his was the most human. Didn't Stewie take the whole cast of TNG to McDonald's or something? <laughs> it's literally an entire episode where they go to a Star Trek convention <laughs> and Stewie doesn't get to like ask a question during the Q&A, so he just beams them all to his house. <laughs> and the entire episode is him hanging out with the cast of TNG. And I love that episode, and I've never seen Star Trek The Next Generation, but the episode is so hilarious. I'd love a shamrock shake if I got any of those. It's September, Jonathan! Stewie, can I take this... Headband off. That just shows how big this show is to a lot of people. Some people even just know, like, TNG and they probably aren't even big fans of TOS. Or maybe they did watch TOS but just love the TNG more, which makes me so intrigued to see how far. I mean, seven seasons, it must have done pretty well. A lot of the audience here is here because of our TOS reactions. And, you know, we've built that audience. And some of them, I think it's a minority, but some of them are like, I'm TOS fans and that's it. But we've had so many people throughout this whole time we've been watching Star Trek that are like, I can't wait to get the next generation. I can't wait, you know. And it's like, that just added to my own anticipation, you know. And, and how many others are out there that are going to find us through this. Uh, and it, we've already, we already feel like we've been on this journey for so long, but really we've just scratched the surface. Yeah, to be honest, I thought I'd be married, divorced, married again and divorced <laughs> before we even started TNG. And like, I haven't even been married yet. I don't even have a girlfriend. <laughs> it's going to take quite a while but i'm excited for that i'm excited to like start this journey that i know is going to take quite a while coming from tos and then the four tos movies what are things that you are uh excited to see or that you hope is more touched upon in this series like i i obviously love tos and i'm excited to see a new star trek show but i don't want to see 
the same Star Trek show and new ways to tell stories of problems of modern society and all that. And just, I, I mean, seven seasons, there has to be some creative episodes, I hope. I'm sure there's some, you know, like, oh, we've seen this before. But I'm just excited, like, all these new possible ways of telling these prime directive stories or and how different of a captain Picard is from Kirk and how he would deal with situations as opposed to Kirk would. That's what I'm very fascinated to see. How this crew, or even this crew dealing with a similar, the exact same situation as our original Enterprise crew did, but what would they do? I'm interested in both, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it's almost like I'm coming at it from in like a two-prong approach. It's like half of my mind's going to be going in completely open-minded, clean slate, treating this as its own show. Uh, but then there's going to be the other half of me that is in the back of my mind thinking the whole time, like, what would this have been like as a TOS episode or how would Kirk have dealt with this, Spock, Bones, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to be very interesting. One of the things I'm most curious about, obviously we know Picard, you know, uh, and the characters who we've already named, but how will this crew as a whole stack up to the TOS crew. That's something I've been curious about for a long time. Uh, and I hope that we kind of get that character building early on because even TOS did not take long to start building their characters. They were building them very quickly. Mm -hmm. So I hope to see that here too. And I hope I can fall in love with these characters as much, if not more than with characters in TOS, but it is a super high bar. It is a very high bar. And I'm excited to discuss with, you know, our, our people as with you, like what's like, what's good, what's not, and why? Yeah, I think people are underestimating how, like, we're going into this in our perspective in the sense that we have nothing to compare it to. You know, we're not comparing this first season to the to the fifth season of the show. We haven't seen it. You know what I mean? So We're just basing it off TOS in the movie. <laughs> yeah, this first season could be the worst of all seven of the show. We wouldn't know that. Yeah, true. <laughs> so, I'm just uh, excited to see televised Star Trek again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, we're going to jump into the reaction, guys. If you want to watch... The whole show along with us, this is the time to jump in. Check out our full and cut reactions on our Patreon. Link to that's in the description. But we're going to jump over to the reaction, and then we'll see you on the other side to talk about the episode, as well as bring up some of our patrons' thoughts and questions for us. So we'll see you on the other side. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Right. Ooh, look at that. Do you think people were, like, against this when it first came out? Like, this isn't... You know what I mean? With, like, the, the movies, the TV show. I mean, this is the first time it's someone else. Oh! We're here! <laughs> oh, my God. If it were me, I feel like I would have been primed and ready, even though it's a different crew and everything. That's just me. I mean, that's how I feel right now. Ooh! There he is! <laughs> Couldn't be so weird, like, we've never seen this or anything, but, you know, it's like, in my pre-Star Trek life, I feel like everything Star Trek I would see was like, this font, this color scheme, you know what I mean? These type of graphics, CGI-wise, like... Mm -hmm. Oh, Quill Wheat! <laughs> Still in that classic 4-3 aspect ratio. <laughs> oh, shit. I've heard of that before. Gorn, like Gorn. <laughs> Any relation to Gorn? <laughs> Terry Goldsmith, he did the movies, right? Or some of them. The name definitely seems familiar, yeah. I wonder who directed the first one. That's what I want to know. It looks so weird. I feel like we get emotional. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was the NC number? 1701 D. Enterprise D. Meanwhile, I am becoming better acquainted with my new command this Galaxy-class USS Enterprise. So we're not just jumping in, this is almost like the start of, of their journey? Yeah. Today. As for my crew, we are short in several key positions. Oh! <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> I'm sensing a, a powerful mind. No, not an empath. Same alarm. Something strange on this detector circuit. You know, they go to those red, ugly uniforms for the movies, but I like how they go back to the colors. Yeah. I like it. They knew what we needed. Well, and it seems like Gene was back in charge. Oh, yeah. Ex executive producer, so. But if we collide with either, it could be very... Shut off that damn noise! Go to yellow alert! What do you think about this design, the bridge design? I like how it's different. It looks very sleek and modern. Shields and deflectors up, sir. Is that the Klingon? Yep, I think that's Worf, who I first knew existed from AVGN's Star Trek episode. <laughs> oh, oh the shit, there he is. I don't know Q was in the first episode, that's crazy. The Dalmates better understand me. 
Go back whence thou camest. Stay with our heart. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Data call medics. He's frozen. Yes, yes thank, thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll recognize this, the stun setting. Knowing humans as thou dost, Captain. So does this like Hugh guy think like, oh, they're a ship. So he like goes in his memory and he's like, oh, this is how ships were to humans. Mm. So they recognize me, I'm a ship captain. <laughs> like a pirate ship or- yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Yeah, he's got some powers. He's got that slight echo to his voice. It might be a uh, powerful being episode. Thy little centuries go by so rapidly. Perhaps I will better understand this. <laughs> oh, okay. He's catching up through the centuries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a cigarette. Sir. Sick Bay reports Lieutenant Torres' condition is better. Oh, concern oh, for one's fellow comrade. I like this futuristic suit. <laughs> Lieutenant Worf is right, sir. Security chief, I can't just stand here and let- Yes, you can, Lieutenant Yah. You know, we had the kid from Pet Cemetery in Apollo 13. I think that's the mom from Pet Cemetery. On finally reaching deep space, humans, of course, found enemies to fight out there, too. Did he change his teeth? I'm not sure, but I could believe it. Our only other option is to tuck tail between our legs and return to Earth as they demand. All right, he's gonna face it head on. I'm just gonna guess that Data is like the fan favorite character. I'm just gonna make that assumption. Based yeah, I think people like him, yeah. I'm just wondering who are, like our Spock, who's our Bones, who's our... I mean, he seems like the Spock stand-in, but oh, ah! there's a Vulcan. Who's our, who's our Scotty? Engine room ready, sir. The board shows green, Captain. All go. Stand by. I, you know, I didn't know Patrick Stewart ever had hair. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit back there. Been like that since, ever since he was 18. It felt like something beyond what we'd consider a life form. We're at 9.4, sir. Oh, I want to see Kirk talk to Q. I feel like they probably like each other a lot. That's why they saved him for a straight-faced Picard, so they can, you know, counteract with each other. Yeah. Kirk would probably love him. <laughs> Projection, sir. We may be able to match Hostiles 9.8, sir. They were on a tight ship with that, sir. You are a Starfleet officer, Lieutenant. Aye, sir. Take the mark, Data. There you go. He's like, your your race doesn't matter, you know? You're part of Starfleet. Part, you're part of the team. <laughs> Bring in the jobbers. <laughs> Ship's log. That at this star time, I'm transferring command to the battle bridge. Battle bridge? I want to see more of the ship. You know, I'm already yeah. like, anxious to see, like, what does this <laughs> place so, look like? I, I, I'm just so excited that we're here. I want to see everything. We got a kid bulk. Nice little shot just showing more people on the Enterprise. Showing the risks, like, hey, there's kids here, so there's uh, more at risk here. Whoa. Whoa. I'll be honest, one of the things I had the lowest expectations for were the special effects. So like, even <laughs> even that is impressive. Interesting how they, I know Jonathan Frakes is Riker and they said his name at the beginning, but he's not here, so. I think they said they're on his way to meet him. Oh, okay, think. Jonathan Frakes that big of a deal? The reveal at the end? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't this predate the Beyond Belief? <laughs> yeah, I think so, yeah. Oh, I've never seen that Enterprise like split in half like that. That's yeah. cool. Oh, that's what they were call talking about with the severing. Okay. Several of the saucer. So is that like to keep all the civil, like not civilians, but like everyone else safe? Yeah, because this is the battle bridge. That's awesome. That is really cool. <laughs> Did this blow up? <laughs> if we can at least damage their ship, we have a yeah. chance. Are you recommending that we fight a life form that can do all those things? I'd like to hear your advice. It seems like it'd be pretty easy to make the Klingon the war battle, you know, let's go. But it's interesting they're having her. And that, like, let's fight it. Yeah, she said she was the security officer, right? Mm -hmm. Language forms and frequencies. I think she's great already. You like her? Yeah. You know what I find weird is, like, we, I have to feel like you and I, especially, we grew up with uh, Patrick Stewart as, like, Charles Xavier, friend, con friendly, kind. Mm -hmm. And, like, some people grew up with him as this. So it's weird to, like, see him as a young man, yeah. like, in this kind of role. Got put into some type of illusion. Honestly, I, I mean, yeah, I know him as obviously uh, Xavier. Professor X, but like, honestly, American Dad, too. <laughs> he plays a big role in that. American Dad? Yeah, he plays like his boss. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. The prisoners will all stand. 
Yeah, I love those uniforms. It is great uniforms. Paying tribute to the past, but upgrading it, which is what they should have done in the movies. Mm-hmm. Mid 21st century, a post atomic horror. Oh, shit. So there was an atomic war in the 21st century? Respectful attention to honored charge. Is that one, it's one of the costumes that Q is wearing. Damn, did we revert to like the Dark Ages and then somehow advance again? That these courts belong in the past. Yeah, I love the lore establishment of stuff that hasn't happened to us yet. Get to your feet, criminals! <laughs> At least we're acquainted with the judge, Captain. This guy gives me vibes of Trelane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I'm guessing he must be making all this up, like in his head or whatever. Mm -hmm. On your feet, attention! <laughs> Whoa! She couldn't hold back anymore. It's like, I'm sick of this shit. She's like, I'm the security officer, damn it. You're out of order. <laughs> oh. The prisoners will not be harmed until they're found guilty. I suppose of that. It's funny, isn't this all an illusion? Probably. Can we assume you mean this will be a fair trial? Yes. That's my guess. Absolutely equitable. We're going to court. First episode. We're going to court. Yes. I'll plead you, criminal. If I may, Captain. Objection, Your Honor. <laughs> the year 2036. Oh, oh you're no. frozen too. Bro has one move in his bag, but it's lethal. <laughs> That's all you need. You barbarian! This woman Criminals keep me. silence! I mean, the other guys seem to be fine. Well, well, they're stuck here, though, so. Yeah, yeah. This is a merciful court. Crowd's booing. <laughs> yeah. His, the crowd that is probably him. Yeah. Pretty good transition shot. Mm -hmm. You are out of order. Uh, uh, oh, damn. Okay. Soldiers, you will press those triggers if this criminal answers with any word other than guilty. <laughs> what a great court. <laughs> criminal, how plead you? Guilty. Oh. Interesting, like, shots there. Like, it looked like there was, like, a fisheye lens or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, it's like the gray... Yeah, this gray... Yeah. Ugh. What is this? The captain had asked the question. Can we assume you mean this will be a fair trial? <laughs> That's good. That's good. And in reply, the judge stated... Yes. Absolutely equitable. <laughs> oh, that's neat. All right, we agree there is evidence to support the court's contention that humans have been savage. I think there's like a boom mic in the shot or something, so they just like, oh shit, let's just <laughs> color over let's it. Let's color over it. I don't know. This honorable court is adjourned. Stand oh, thank God, I thought that was going to be the whole episode. <laughs> I thought it was just going to be in that setting. And it looks like everyone else was like frozen. Or it was like instant for everyone else. Personal log, Commander William Riker. Oh, oh, did this really happen? <laughs> <laughs> ah, Commander Riker. I thought you'd want to know we've still no word from your vessel. Oh my god. He is a baby face. He's so young. And if that happens, we will have to punish you. We will, I promise you. Grappler, I'm still in the room. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, did you say something as I was walking out? <laughs> I never noticed how bright his eyes were. So blue. Well, it, he looks like an AI generated Jonathan <laughs> Franks. <laughs> I'll take the entire bolt. Send it to our starship when it arrives. Charge to Dr. Crusher. I hope he got all that. Jean Luc Picard, you know the captain. When I was little, he brought my father's body home to us. Yes, Wes, long, long ago. That's sad. Origin story. Wes? Sir? See you on board. Yes, sir. Sir? Hey! Oh! Enterprise, this is Commander Riker at Farpoint Station. 
standing by to beam up. Oh, got a little communicator on the, the chest now, huh? See that? Yeah. Nice beam up effect. Lieutenant Yar of security, sir. Captain Picard will see you on the battle bridge. Sleek looking transporter. Everything's very slick about this new new show. It definitely has like the vibes of the ships from the movies, but like just a little bit cheaper. Like you can tell it's like yeah. not quite as much budget. <laughs> I think it's still charming though. Yeah. Riker WT reporting is ordered, sir. The view are ready. All set up, sir. We'll first bring you up to date on a little adventure we had on our way here, Commander. Then we'll talk. Welcome aboard. This way, sir. Does have a pretty hard exterior, huh? Now on directed security footage. <laughs> Everything's recorded. It will arrive here in 51 minutes. Inform them we'll connect as soon as they arrive, and send the commander to me when he's finished. Yes, sir. I love that it's just like, all right, Riker, catch up on the first act. <laughs> Since then, there are no indications that humans will ever change. There are preparations to make, but when we next meet, Captain. We'll proceed. For the people who didn't make it home in time to see the first half. <laughs> yeah, I would have lost it if they had footage of the, of the illusion oh, like, in yeah, the core. Yeah. <laughs> How did you get this? Oh, these new pins are also body cams. That'd be a good idea. Commander Riker will conduct a manual docking. The card out. Sir? You've reported in, haven't you? You are qualified. Yes, sir. Then I mean now, Commander. <laughs> I'm here to do a job, that's it. I like that little look though at the end, like he does like him, like, yeah, I yeah, like this guy. Yeah. He doesn't give me any back talk. I think, and he's giving him a test here, at the risk of everyone. <laughs> but I think he has faith in him, otherwise why would he give him this mm -hmm. possibly very dangerous task? Velocity to one half meter per second. But he's not actually driving it, it's up to these guys. I mean, sure they're just following directions, but if they mess Adjust up. pitch angle. Negative three degrees. Watch your roll, Angle Khan. No, oh, they don't think he's correct. Yeah, they're you know, I don't know. I wonder if they how many times they've done this. Probably not since the Academy, maybe. Like a glove. But you think he's getting any praise from Picard? Nope. Picard's probably gonna be like, all right, next. Congrats on doing your job. <laughs> yeah, puts him down for it. <laughs> I like the addition of the windows and the lights and stuff. Mm -hmm. Makes it look more lived in. Yeah. Even though I don't know if in space you would have that, but uh, <laughs> maybe in the future, the glass is so strong. I'm not a family man, Riker, and yet Starfleet has given me a ship with children aboard. Yes, sir. And I, uh, I don't feel comfortable with children. Same, relatable. This is my guy right here. Welcome to the Enterprise, Commander Riker. Woo! Let's go! That's as friendly as you're gonna get. <laughs> Is a remarkable piece of bioelectronic engineering by which I quote, see much of the EM spectrum. Oh, nice. Okay. I thought we would never see his face. <laughs> nope, right away. You've been blind all your life. Mm-hmm. I was born this way. And you felt pain all the years that you've used this. Mm. Well, I see two choices. The first is painkillers. Oh, thank you, doctor. See you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little ironic, but damn, he just has to live in pain. So he's a more empathetic character. Yeah. And does the visor, I wonder, like, can he just, like, see completely? Is it, like, remember at Blade Runner 2049, Jared Leto with his little, you know, uh -huh. is it like that? Or those are his eyes? Or is it, like, Daredevil, like a pulsating yeah, yeah. vision? The Admiral is a rather remarkable man. You got some reason you oh, want what? atoms scattered all over space, boy. But at your age, sir, I thought you shouldn't have to put up with the time and trouble of a shuttlecraft. Hold it right there, boy. Oh my God! <laughs> if that subject troubles you, troubles me. What's so damn troublesome about not having died? <laughs> oh my God! I remember every fact I'm exposed to, sir. Or does he know he's a robot? <laughs> See no points on your ears, boy. But you sound like a Vulcan. No, sir. I'm an android. Mm. Almost as bad. <laughs> oh my God, that's oh, crazy. Well, this is a new ship. She's got the right name. Now you remember that, you hear? I will, sir. Treat her like a lady. She'll always bring you home. Wow. I did not expect that. I thought we wouldn't get a reference to the TOS for a while. Yeah. Not an actual character in the damn show. That's insane. Holy shit, I got a little emotional there. What was the reply, computer? You're wasting time, Captain. 
Or did you think I was? Oh, no. <laughs> Lieutenant. He's going to shoot him. <laughs> it's an illusion. You intend to blast a hole in the viewer. <laughs> oh, my God. Any further delay and you risk summary judgment against you, Captain. Sorry, sir. You reacted fast, Mr. Wharf. But futilely. Careful, Riker. Yeah. You look too comfortable. Do you remember what I taught you, Imzadi? Can you still sense my thoughts? Pleasure. Likewise, Counselor. Have the two of you met before? A little Decker and Aliyah thing going on here? We have, sir. Yeah, very similar. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I don't care about the details. <laughs> I mean, it literally seems like it's Decker and Aaliyah's story. Like, characters changed a little bit, uh -huh. you know, but they're like, damn it. She's like, damn it, I wanted to do this. We didn't get to tell the story in phase two. We're going to tell it here. Yeah. No objections to that, but I'm puzzled. Oh, you bringing a better This kind of looks like the interior to episode one of Star Trek TOS. Oh, yeah, the man trap? Yeah. I'm only half Betazoid. Betazoid? My father was a Starfleet officer. Okay, so she's our Spock half person. Have you any idea? No. No, absolutely not. And I find nothing helpful or productive in any of this. <laughs> Do you think it's all Q? All of this? Yeah. Eh, maybe. But, I mean, this guy seemed to exist even after Riker left. Yeah, so. true. He was, because he was, maybe he was talking to Q. Maybe Q's just, like, aware. Yeah. The Ferengi would be very interested in a base like this. Why? Right. Let's hope they find you as tasty as they did their past associates. <laughs> Riker gave him that look. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, gotcha. Tell me the location of Commander Data. Lieutenant Commander Data, now located in Holodeck Area 4J. No privacy. <laughs> Maybe it's just data because he's an uh, android. Yeah. No, nah, it's probably all of them. Or can you turn your location off? The next hatchway on your right. That gives you directions as you're going. Well, that's pretty neat. Riker. And if you care to enter, Commander. I do. Hopefully it's not like Battlestar Galactica and they actually keep that throughout the series, not just one episode. Yeah, we'll see. That looks good. Whoa. It's like that rec room that was like more explored oh, in TAS. From TAS? Yeah. yeah. And he's looking for data? What's data doing in here? I don't know. Charging? <laughs> well, this is definitely on location somewhere. You think so? You don't think it's just like a, oh, they could build this? I don't know. It seems pretty extensive. I mean, the trees, yeah. Yeah, true. I want to know what the immersion is of this rec room. Like, if he falls in the water, does he actually get wet? You know what I mean? Yeah, and with the elevation, if they turn him off, does it all go flat? Yeah. You know what I mean? Good question. You suggest that I take you with me on the way team that I'll be leading. I shall endeavor to function adequately, sir. Yes. <laughs> it seems people aren't too familiar with androids. Yeah, it, like even Riker? Yeah. Mom, could you get me a look at the bridge? That's against the captain's standing orders. Are you afraid of the captain, too? I certainly am not. It, it is very interesting to have children on the Enterprise. Like, this seems very dangerous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hang on. I'm coming. Enterprise, lock us on to her signal. Ooh, they quick with it. Yeah, very quick. Still got that, uh, not straight up and down, but beam location to location. Mm -hmm. Close your mind. Unhappiness. <laughs> Terrible despair. Ooh. Bones. <laughs> I still can't believe we saw him. You think of it? You think when this is advertised? Oh, you better watch your new show. An original team member is going to be in the show. They probably put him in the commercial. It wasn't in the opening credits though. Starring DeForest Kelly <laughs> <laughs> as Bones this Sunday. <laughs> Children are not allowed on the bridge. Permission to report to the captain, sir. My son is not on the bridge. He merely accompanied me on the turbo lift. <laughs> history between these two yeah for sure i think something might have transpired when he brought home her dead husband <laughs> you last saw him years ago when well florida is here <clears throat> i knew your father wesley to look around hey okay a little, a little character growth in the same episode i like yeah true and i was going to say like uh because of that earlier setup like the kids not being allowed on the bridge probably isn't even like an enterprise thing it's just picard <laughs> his rule but don't touch anything <laughs> <laughs> well, we know what happened in season three of TOS with kids on the bridge. Oh, yeah, you're well, right. That's why. It's kind of awkward. A little POV shot, yeah. <laughs> New bridge is whack, but in like a cool way. Which <laughs> uses high resolution multi spectral imaging sensors. How the hell do you know that, boy? Oh, Primitive alert, Captain. Wesley, I'm sorry. Wes, you shouldn't have touched Get off the bridge. <laughs> Alert, sir. As my son tried to tell you. 
Oh, she got that last word. Uh, I've commander Riker and his team beam back up. Security, could that be the hood returning here? The vessel does not match the hood's configuration or ID signal. Put it on main viewer. Why didn't no one answer him about them beaming back up? Maybe they just did it. I don't know. Because I thought there was going to be like a problem. Sir, we can't. Because of this new material that they were talking about. Hail it. You've been trying, sir. No response. Looks like a straight up UFO. Yeah. The little jean jacket. Or it's Q. This is what you think aliens look like, right? They have ships like this. <laughs> there are no ships scheduled to arrive until... I asked you if you knew who it is. <laughs> <laughs> We were making an empty threat. I wanted your cooperation. Definitely entering orbital trajectory, sir. It measures 12 times our volume, Captain. Are Ferengi going to be like the new Romulans, Romulan Klingons? Klingons. Those always looming threat or... It's like, how about we... I would like to build out the Romulans and Klingons, you know what I mean? I'm sure they do, but... Yeah, I'm not against new species as well, but, I mean, interesting that it's just the prototypical, you know, UFO, even as the beam, tractor beam. Giant ship, too, the perspective here. Yeah. They're hitting the old bandy city, not far point station. Man, they're shooting a lot. Wah! Nice. That looks like a classic TOS set. Yeah. You have your orders, Lieutenant. Carry them out. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Enterprise, three to beam up. So was the engine room, beaming room, just sitting there waiting for them to call? Like, oh, I can't beam them up until they confirm? Well, something was blocking their communicators, so... That, that's right, that's yeah, right. Yeah, there must have been a problem, but so I, I guess just leaving that room was a problem. Oh! So maybe they tried to reach out what and gave up do? and they didn't answer. Enterprise, help us, please! Tune that down! <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Typical. So typical. Savage life forms never follow even their own rules. Got you there. They tried to reach out. They did. Yeah, true. But they weren't being directly attacked. Let's consider your thoughts. You call us savages, and yet you knew those people down there were going to be killed. It is your conduct that is uncivilized. I love the back and forth. Yeah, it's like, when I attack my humanity, screw you. Yeah, what even are you? You have no ship control, sir. It's gone. Oh, no. Oh! Yeah. I'll try to explain. <laughs> oh? I'm trying to be considerate of your feelings, Doctor. You two work with a commanding officer who would continually remind you of a terrible personal tragedy. Why would you continually remind her? <laughs> you remember when I came to you <laughs> with your dead husband? Yes! God damn it, yes! I'm sure he just means like his physical presence or riser of it. Yeah, yeah. Energize. I like to imagine that Riker is uh, Kirk before he became captain, probably someone's first officer. Yeah, I mean, they gotta rise up through the ranks, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what they said about John Luke. He was the first officer. Don't stop, my friend. Oh, He's like, hey, I have a friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's turning out to be a very long tunnel or corridor, sir. No ship's crew in sight. No sign of mechanism or circuitry. So obviously they were in a probably a crashed ship of the same species below on the planet. That's what you think, yeah. Yeah. Like, are there, or maybe even they were keeping a prisoner or something. Well, at least had a crash pad for yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> luckily, there's a cushion there. Transporter chief, yank them back now. Right, can acknowledge. Your time is up, Captain. <laughs> now I'm the captain. <laughs> it was that which sent us back, Captain. Yes, sir. It is not merely a vessel. Somehow it is alive. She lies. Destroy it while you it's have jean it. jacket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Some nice detail. Yeah. But on the bandy and their city. Attacking those who had captured, captured its mate. <laughs> He said, mate, so I'd show them. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, because they have a relationship. Yeah. So that's why they had that whole scene in the uh, rec room about, you know, energy creating this different matter and all that. Mm -hmm. 
not getting feedback on the beam, sir. Discontinued. So I wonder, like, what was that other creature that he had prisoner doing for them besides, like, it made apples appear? Like, I wonder what else it was doing. Yeah. They made the thing appear at the market? Oh, is it literally the entire town? The entire... Th oh, my God. And we did feed it. But only enough to keep it alive so that you can force it to shape itself into whatever form you need. I wonder if the people in the town were aware of this. I wonder how this relationship even formed. Hey, just land here. We well, he said it was like dying or something. Uh, Maybe it just like crashed. Oh, uh, the other one just wasn't paying attention. Or well, maybe they weren't together at that time. They broke up and now they're back together. <laughs> Whatever. It's a cool story. I yeah, like it doesn't it. matter. <laughs> no, that's uh, that's Decker and Ilya. That's what they became. <laughs> ah, one's pink, one's blue. <laughs> Did I pass your test, you little, you little bitch? <laughs> We've passed your little test. Tem, tem, from un capitaine. Get off my ship. I do so only because it suits me to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I will not promise never to appear again. There you go. They're like, this, it's different this time around. <laughs> it's still episodic, but I'll be back. I'll be. I was hoping this isn't the usual way our missions will go, sir. Oh no, number one. I'm sure most will be much more interesting. <laughs> Let's see what's out there. Engage. Woo! Woo! Well, it is October. It's spooky season. But I gotta tell you, I wasn't scared. I wasn't terrified. I wasn't disgusted. I was quite happy with that episode, even with 90 minutes long. And you know how I feel about those 90 minute pilots. Yeah. You know how I feel about those 90 <laughs> minute pilots. But I loved this. I liked it a lot. Um, I feel like I have so much to say. Um, uh, look, can we start with Bones? <laughs> yes, got to get that out of the way. The Forrest Kelly showing up, I think, was the biggest reaction moment and the biggest surprise to me of this episode. Yeah, the thing is, I've heard that like he shows up in TNG at some point. Like I've heard that, but I didn't realize it was in the first episode. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. It's like, holy shit. What a way to, like, I don't know, not pass the torch, but, you know, a nice little scene between him and Data. You know, a nice little character stuff going on. 137 years old, I think, which is yeah. crazy. It really put into perspective that, like, the time lapse between TOS and this show. Mm -hmm. Like, they are not at all, you know, close to each other. They're within the same lifetime, apparently. But, um, and that's all they needed with them was that one scene. Don't drag it out. You know, I was afraid they were going to try to bring them back in at the end. Like, ah, oh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I got to solve this somehow. <laughs> yeah. We need a doctor. <laughs> we start off uh, with the opening of basically a very similar intro that we've seen before. No cold open. Nope. Right, in, right into the intro. I wonder mm -hmm. if there will be no cold opens in the whole show. But mm. uh, right into the intro, an updated version yet again. And I'm talking about the vibe, the style. I'm not saying it's the exact same. But, um, you know, same vibe with the... This time it's Patrick Stewart, Picard, doing the uh, the verbal monologue intro. What do you think about that? It, it was kind of jarring but exciting. It kind of reminded me of like when Spock did the, uh, the intro at the end of Wrath of Khan. It was jarring, almost, to hear someone else doing it. Like, all right, we're jumping right in. It's like, there's no, you know, uh, passing the torch. This is the next generation. This is a new story. This is a regular intro that every captain does. We're jumping in. I, it got me super pumped. I was excited. Yeah, uh, I agree. And then it jumps into uh, the episode where we have Picard seemingly like they're about to start their journey. Yes, that's the one thing about this episode. It felt like the first episode of a TV show, yes. which TOS didn't do. But this episode, I think, did very well, where it seems like, okay, I think Picard's been a captain of a ship before, but now he's Captain Enterprise D, he's kind of, like, overseeing it. We get another POV character, Riker, like, he's also new, so we get his perspective of, like, the new Enterprise. It's like, oh, we have this new map system where you just say, oh, where's this person? And it gives you directions as you're going down the hall. Like, that's cool. That's neat. Neat little upgrades to the Enterprise. Yeah, I thought the Enterprise in this Enterprise, the 1701D, looked great. Uh, the exterior shots of it I thought were cool mm -hmm. and updated, and the whole interior just looks sleek and modern, uh, even though this was made in the 80s. It looks, like, really modern even to today, and uh, there wasn't anything, like, goofy or out of place about the design that I felt like, oh, we would... Like, everything still looked like I could believe this being a futuristic ship, uh, so I was really impressed with that. Uh, everything about this show, in terms of the comparison part of it, I feel like it's, like, I just don't want 
want it to be the same thing but worse just like make it different still have the energy the, the essence of the Ed original uh but picard was different than kirk but he has his own style and it's relatable john delancey who plays jo q john delancey q yeah i thought patrick stewart played excellent off of q mm -hmm. as i mean q is a basically the villain of the episode but he's like kind of in the background for most of it yeah, kind of the villain but he's also like there to like push picard to be yeah. better even though picard's pretty so good. He's, he's like claiming that the, all humans are savages and that's why he's going to kill them and they're like oh let us prove we're not savages mm -hmm. and so after that point which i will say my least favorite part of the whole episode was that courtroom sequence unfortunately yeah, i then, wanted to like it but i just it was weird it didn't really pay off yeah in the end but i love john delancey as q like he, i don't know I, I talked about it in the reaction but i don't know if he would work as well with kirk as opposed to just straight nosed picard i felt like they bounced off each other perfectly yeah absolutely and like later on in the episode when they're doing the back and forth uh, about whether or not you know humans are savages and he's like oh you should be helping the people down on the planet but actually they already are going to help the people on the planet you know picard was like right there with him uh he didn't make picard like look like a fool or anything he was too likable like I'm, i can see why like almost like <laughs> the hairy mud of this yeah. of this show where like i love this guy i don't care what he does that's that's the vibe i got from him yeah, I liked him a lot too, and I'm glad that uh, they even like set him up at the end to come back. Like it was clearly intentional. I will not promise never to appear again. Mm -hmm. And I know he comes back too, just because my limited knowledge of Star Trek, like Q, I know is just like a big thing. So mm. I just assume like they're not going to name this character Q, and then he's in one episode, you know. Um, but I'm I'm looking forward to see that back and forth with those two characters again. And then we've already brought him up, but Jonathan Frakes as Riker. I'm going to be fully. I'm admit my bias here. Riker will most likely be my favorite character in the show just because I already love Jonathan Frakes, but it was weird seeing him and it's such a different role here. It's, it was very jarring to see him not with facial hair and like his bare face just highlights his eyes to like a crazy level. Like I, I brought it up, but he looks like Homelander. It, it was weird for me at first, of course, to get used to it because it's an, you already know the actor. You have to get used to this character and it's in Star Trek, you know. But I thought once I kind of understood his role of being like the audience's perspective for this episode, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if he's going to be that the whole show, but uh, I, I thought he'd, he was good. I'm I, I'm glad that I I, I was able to like kind of put aside my past knowledge of that actor and buy into him. He is Riker to me now. Like next episode when we go in, it's like that's Riker. It's I don't think it's gonna. I was worried it's gonna be like oh it's Jonathan Frakes from Beyond Belief the whole show. But I, but I don't feel like <laughs> he doesn't that. talk. Yeah, he doesn't talk like Jonathan Frakes from Beyond Belief. He talks <laughs> yeah. he talks like Riker. Denise Crosby as Lieutenant Tasha Yar, the security officer. I liked everyone more. Like her only thing was like she was like so gung ho about like fighting whatever happened and then like did that really pay off in the end with her i think it was just establishing that i think that's just going to be her character yeah i'm i appreciate the restraint that it wasn't a wharf who was like we got to destroy him right now you <laughs> know what i mean the klingon, the klingon yeah. yeah you know yeah. what i mean he was much more reserved i like that too yeah and i like that it, i mean let's just say it i like that it's a female character it may it may, gives it a little bit of a twist like the one who's going to be uh jane from firefly she reminds me of the jane of this show so being a mm -hmm. female like yeah i you know i know it's generic to say like oh a woman is the security <laughs> officer but it is it gives it that little twist you know uh that i'm looking forward to see how that plays out because because she definitely seems like a, a punch first, ask questions later type of character. I can already tell Data, uh, Brent Spiner, Data is going to be my favorite. I knew nothing about Data other than the fact that he existed. I've never seen him in anything, in, in a clip or anything. And first, the first scene with him, I was afraid like, oh, this is going to be their Spock. He's not going to have his own character. It's just going to be Spock. But I was already proven wrong in this episode. I think they've already done a really good job establishing him. He's not Spock. Like he is his own character of this Android character. I'm glad that he's going to be your favorite character because I think I'm going to be the other side of not hating him, but I think I'm going to be like the skeptic of like, yeah, this is everyone's favorite character. Like, because I, it's I, everyone's yeah, favorite. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be contrarian, you know, but I didn't No, I enjoyed him a lot. One of my favorite scenes of the whole episode was him, uh, Data and Riker in that uh, rec room environment mm -hmm. and just talking and meeting each other. And that's how, like you said, felt like a pilot. Like we actually got to see some of these characters. Meet some each growth other. here. Yeah, yeah. Some establishment and seeing how it's going to play off. It's as much as I love the man trap. It, it was just like, you're in it. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. figure it out. It's like, 
Even though TOS and this are both episodic shows, I'm pretty, I mean, I'm pretty certain this is an episodic, episodic show still. Um, I think you can start to see the progression of television where it's like TOS is like basically an anthology, but with the same crew of characters, yeah. like completely different, almost no callbacks. Mm -hmm. This, I think you're going to be able to see that the trickling of, of, a, of a through line. I'm not expecting anything huge or any continuing storylines through episodes, but just a little bit more of, I think there, as, as television went on through the decades, became more aware of like, we should make this a building thing. Marina Sirtis as counselor Deanna Troy. At first I was like, eh, she grew on me a little bit, but you know, just <laughs> it's based on bad memories of the empath of episode the from TOS. So I was like, oh, is that going to be here the entire episode or the entire show? Just, uh, yeah, I feel, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, well, let's clear it up now. First of all, I think her performance was better than the empath. Nothing against the woman who played the empath in that episode, but like, mm -hmm. it's just the way that the episodes worked. Like in that episode, we were laughing so much because it was like every scene, they're like, someone had to be like, she's an empath. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, had to remind you. And this, like, yeah, they touch on it and like what her abilities are. But um, it, it's not like... I, at least I felt like it wasn't in your face the entire time. And when she does, like, read people's emotions or the ship's emotions, it, it like, pays off, you know. I th it pays off in this one because we don't know who she's talking about. Yeah. And that's where it works, where it's like, oh, is it Q? Because Q can obviously create all these things. Mm -hmm. So that was my thought, like, oh, it's Q. It's all Q. Nope, it's these two jellyfish things. In that sense, it works. But I feel like I'm afraid she's going to be, like, the exposition machine oh like every episode yeah where she's like oh this is happening because <laughs> you know what i mean i could see that being a worry yeah we'll, we'll see that's my tentative character we'll see how we'll re revisit, revisit troy see how we feel uh michael dorn is lieutenant Worf. doesn't get to do much in this episode but it's cool there's a klingon i'm excited to see what he does he had a nice little moment where he's like he pulls out his phaser at the hologram uh, <laughs> or the the illusion <laughs> of q it's like He's not really there, man. Yeah, and Come he's going to shoot through the viewfinder <laughs> thing, just yeah. break open the, the ship. Uh, how about the Crushers? Beverly and uh, Wesley. Uh, I mean, yeah, they're there. We'll see. I just like the little bit of history there. It's like, oh, it's not just, you know, Doctor and... Oh, Doctor and her kid. You know, yeah. like, oh, God. It's like, oh, no, Picard delivered dead husband's body years ago. Neat little scene where it's like, oh, you can transfer if you want. It's like, no, I'm a professional. Yeah. We'll be fine. Yeah, good setup for a pilot for sure. And it's cool to have a doctor still, a doctor character. At first I was like, are we getting the security officer and getting rid of the doctor? We also don't really have a chief engineer, I don't think. Like, the person in the transporter room is never... We really never saw the, yeah, yeah. the person. So they're mixing it up a little bit, but we still have the doctor, so I was glad about that. Yeah, it's, it's weird. I like how there's new roles, but it's weird seeing other ones taken away, if that makes mm -hmm. any sense. Like, we never saw who's in that engine room all we heard was man you know that was what the subtitle said man how about we just talk about who wrote the damn thing dc and gene dream yeah. team talk about that dc fontana i hope she does more man i hope she does more uh this isn't my favorite dc fontana story but i'm, I'm glad that she was, was on here as a writer and hopefully it's not her only time doing it and gene roddenberry writing it it's like you could tell at least in the beginning of the show i mean our comments have already kind of let us know what eventually ends up happening with gene but uh I don't know the full details. I just know he's not there the whole time. I don't know what happens or when it happens. But, you know, for him to seemingly take a much more, like, front and center approach to this at first, at least for the pilot, I think you can really tell. Um, and then DC Fontana, yeah. Uh, I thought the writing for the characters was good, which is always what she's been good at in TOS. Oh, yeah. It was all great. Everyone felt like their own person. Writing was good. Stuff that, you know, episode kept me guessing. It felt like a very classic Star Trek episode. I think DC and Gene are the two of the most Star Trek people you can get besides the cast of TOS, you know, to work on this. And I thought it went really well. I'll talk about the costumes. Just praise them. <laughs> That's it. I love the costumes. This is what I wanted to see in the movies. I loved them. Just like that new, slick, modern, like almost upgraded from a comic. You know what I mean? It's like if they yeah. were to bring like a comic costume to live action, that's what it would look like. I thought they were great. Troy's was kind of weird, like no sleeves, no leggings. But I guess that fits well, her. Well, I liked it, though, yeah. That fits her, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, loved these uniforms. I agree 100% with you. It's like the perfect way of bringing it basically exactly the vibe from TOS, but 
not having it be too goofy. Not that I think TOS ones are goofy, but like if you had brought them into the 80s, like maybe they would have started to get a little dated. Can you imagine Bakari wearing the green one that Kirk used to wear? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been so weird. weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For the first like 75% of the episode, I was into it, but I'm like, this seems just kind of like a weird one to be the first episode, the pilot. But the twist of the story, you know, basically, nope. <laughs> the twist of the story yes. that the ships are creatures and it's you know the ship isn't the bad guy it just wants to get its mate from uh uh far point mm -hmm. um I, that i really liked and by the end of it when they were showing the ending and the two you know creatures floating away i'm like this is a really nice timeless story to be the pilot i think it just got a little bit messy getting there yeah i mean with it being 90 minutes you know there's a lot 50 minute episode might have been perfect you mm -hmm. know what i mean yeah. like i don't know what it is with tv shows and they're you want a TV show, you have to have a 90-minute pilot. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I would love to know the story why that, that was. Like, what's the Q stuff really needed? Like, oh, the court stuff, if you take, you know, strip out some stuff, save the Q court stuff. For, yeah. Like, like he could have just shown up and put this into motion. We didn't need a whole entire court sequence that lasted 10 minutes and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, just cut some of that out. Still have Q show up and, like, you got to figure out what's going on here you gotta solve this problem with this planet and like have it set up zorn is like have him really set up like he's a good guy but then it, you find out later that he's not yeah because you can tell right away from his first scene out, yeah yeah from his first scene of zorn you can tell there's deceit there so mm -hmm. it's like let, let that play out a little bit more um and my favorite scenes of q are his first scene and his last scene so i think that goes to show that we didn't need much of him in the middle another highlight for me i really like the moment with Worf where Picard tells him to go into the ship that's going to separate. And he's like, I'm a Klingon. I can't leave my captain in battle. And he's like, you're a member of Starfleet. Like, it doesn't matter that you're a Klingon. Yeah, I think that's one constant they've had throughout all the shows, really. It's like, you know, it's like Starfleet. Like, we're a team here. It doesn't matter who you are, where you've been. Love that. Unity. And we didn't really talk about Jordy as a character. He gets introduced here, doesn't get to do much, but we get to hear his whole backstory, which I was clueless to. I knew he had a visor, presumably because he was blind, mm -hmm. but I had no idea like what the situation was. They give it right to you in the pilot. He's been blind his whole life, and this visor gives him pain, but he has to deal with it. Yeah, I think that sets him up to be a sympathetic character. I don't, are they ever going to go into that he's in pain all the time? ever again but i love the resolution of uh q testing picard for all humans and picard being like as a, you know the representative of the human race it's like no it's like i went through all your checks you know i sent medical people down there i did all this optimistic ending let's see what's out there engage our, our new catchphrase i'm like love yeah. it great ending it to felt a, pilot. Like a, a classic star trek ending mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and i'm very excited to see once we jump in, you know, uh, to the next episode we watch is going to be jumping into the normal, you know, single episodes and how that feels in terms of pacing and how they tell the story and all of that. So, yeah, it's going to be cool. Um, we're going to be doing this format, but I'm sure we'll mess around with it a little bit. But this will be, the, you know, the format we do moving forward just to talk a little bit more about the episodes. But the reaction, of course, still in there. Um, and uh, we probably won't talk this extensively about every single episode, uh, but it's the first one. So it's we the had first to, one. We, yeah. I had, I'm, I'm, I feel like we can talk about this even more if I can think of something, but I can't. Yeah, I mean, it was almost like watching a movie. Like, it was, you know... It, it was 90 minutes. Yeah, 90-minute yeah. pilot, and I had a lot to say. So we're going to jump into a new segment called Patron Takes. We ask all of our patrons of all tiers to let us know both their thoughts on the episode, as well as asking us questions about something they might think, uh, want to know that we thought about the episode. Uh, but we also ask for this one, since it's the first one, to also just do a general thoughts preview about getting into the next generation. So we're just going to choose a few here to read and respond to. Uh, and if you want to be part of the patron takes, go sign up on Patreon. This one's from uh, CM Waters. <laughs> Given your past issues with God characters in Trek, I'm curious about your opinion on this one. I like it a lot. John Delancey gets a pass. Q gets a pass. <laughs> and I didn't think that uh, he was much of a God, even though, yeah, he can do whatever he wants, really. But, like, he didn't, like, impose himself on, like, I'm going to destroy you or take over the ship. He didn't make the crew dance or anything. He didn't, yeah. like, cause any problems. He did freeze a few of them. This one's from David Wayne Fox. Considering your history with episodes and movies that are supposed to be bad, I think you'll really enjoy the first couple of seasons. <laughs> More than anyone thinks. Really? Yes, there are some cringy lines and moments, but I was pretty much hooked from the very beginning back when it originally premiered. I think that the later seasons are just so damn good that it makes the first couple of seasons in retrospect look pretty weak, when in fact they're mostly quite enjoyable. I think that's a pretty good summation of what I expect. 
I think that because we don't know how good the later seasons are, according to everyone, I think we're going to enjoy these a lot. That being said, who knows? Maybe we jump into episode three and it's garbage. You know, we'll find out soon when we watch it. Um, but yeah, I think that that's a pretty good summary of what I'm expecting and how our perspective is going to be different. As he said, when the show first came on, you know, he really enjoyed it. And I'm sure a lot of people when it first came on, you know, were like, oh, this is really good. But it was only later once they loved the show that they, you know. Go back and be like, oh, that wasn't as good. I mean, I'm sure we still have our excited goggles on, but still, I feel like later on, if I go back and watch this one, there's going to be some parts I enjoy. But it makes me really wonder how good these later seasons are. This one's from uh, David Felgate. Considering their reaction to the empath, I'm curious as to what Alex and Josh will make of Deanna Troy in Encounter at Far Point. She's not annoying yet. <laughs> I, I think she actually played a pretty good part, uh, pretty good ro uh, part to the story and gave some yeah. clues and like little made me ask questions as opposed to the empath where I was just like, oh god. This is this is what would have been bad. You know, like the first time she does a thing and starts feeling pain, if she had been like, ah, oh, pain, and then like start to pass out, and then the car goes, she's an empath. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been like, all right, but they didn't do that. Jeff Edders said, except for a, this is a hot take, I think. Well, maybe not. A lot of people think this. I all think, right, but. Let's see. Except for a handful of episodes, seasons one and two are practically unwatchable. <laughs> well, I hope you watch it with us, at least. You're on the Patreon. <laughs> but Next Generation begins the golden age of Star Trek, which ends with Star Trek Enterprise, and many huge fans of TOS find themselves loving this even more than TOS. Have fun. I'm jealous. I don't know. I feel like with you and I right next to each other, we can talk about We can keep it interesting somehow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that's what I mean is like we know, I feel like we can feel when we're watching something, when we're kind of on the vibe of like, this is, I don't, I don't maybe not unwatchable, but this is like, let's revert into, you know, uh, making jokes mode that pisses everybody off. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I mean, people have been like shoving it down our throats how, you know, bad, this, bad, that. But I just, I take me back to season three of Star Trek where it's like only... I don't know, a few mo a few times? There's the kid episode. The kid episode, yeah. <laughs> it's like, how many... Okay, if there's any episodes like that, or the empath, or the one where they get old, you know what I mean? Are yeah. they all like that? And all different, unique ones? I'm kind of excited to see it. You know what I mean? It's like watching a car crash, or a slow car crash. Yeah, I'm absolutely. curious. Uh, this one's from James Botus. I hope I said that right. Encounter at Farpoint gives TNG something TOS never got, which is an actual episode one first mission for the crew. With TOS, you go either with the man trap, the cage, or where no man has gone before, and all three of those just plop you in the mid-adventure with, with a crew that's already been off and running. Here, some of our characters haven't even been aboard the Enterprise yet, so everyone's kind of awkward, pretty overly formal with one another. If nothing else, it's relatable in that aspect. That's another point you brought up, how ridiculously e formal everyone is. That's another point. Every Sir was dropped like eight times in like a two-sentence run. Which is crazy, because when we think of TOS and how like unformal they were, because they were all friends. It was probably year two or three, they've all known each other, but this is literally like the first run of this Enterprise. Yeah. So no wonder they're all like, sir, sir, sir. It's like, and like Picard runs that tight ship, and it feels like an actual like military naval crew. And I'm excited to see if that all goes away, or like lightens up a little bit. That development where instead of, you know... Captain Picard, we get a little more John Luke drops there or whatever. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, yeah, as of right now, it feels like a workplace. And it should because of the plot and the way that it's set up. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be even, I think it'll be very fun to see that turn into these relationships that we're going to see grow over this season and the, and the seasons to come. Grow with the characters, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see you guys. We'll see how it goes. How much will we enjoy this first season and the entire show? Join along with us here on YouTube. Check out all of our uh, Star Trek reactions we already have. But this is a great time to jump on that Patreon and watch this entire show in full along with us. Especially if you you know, haven't rewatched The Next Generation in a while. So check that out. And uh, yeah, we don't really know how we're going to end this yet, I don't think. Maybe with a little story. We were going to do a joke where we had two different people sitting here in the chairs. But it didn't work out. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we did talk about that. But yeah, we didn't. that didn't pan out. That would have been funny. <laughs> Downloading the research information gathered on the collapsing star nearby. Related to the naked time? You are fully functional, aren't you? 
Of course, but <laughs> how fully? In every way, of course. <laughs> what? I'm programmed in multiple techniques. What? Bro has multiple techniques. Oh shit.